Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now despite my use of the word cheapest in the title, the RTX 2070 featured in today's video wasn't exactly what I call cheap. It was just less expensive than pretty much every other RTX card I've seen in the country at the moment, bar a couple of 2060s of course. Now the catch, because you know there always is a catch when we buy so-called cheap or reduced cards, is that it is an X-Display model. And £369, well, it was cheaper than every other RTX 2070 that I've seen on the market within the last couple of months. So I was a little tempted, to say the least. 90% of me was saying don't buy it, and the 10% that can't be reasoned with went ahead and clicked add to basket. So here we are. What I wanted to do though was to talk about my experience when buying an X display card. We'll see what we get in the box, we'll see whether or not the card is damaged, if we get the original accessories, um, whether we need to replace the thermal paste, things like that, and generally just talk about what you can expect from a card like this, how long's the warranty, stuff like that, and most importantly we'll be seeing how it performs and we'll be discussing this particular model. So without further ado, let's get into it and unbox the GPU itself. So first things first, the box is a little dented which may be a slight blow to anyone who likes to proudly display their packaging on a shelf, but I'm not too concerned as long as the card isn't dented. An X-Display graphics card might have spent its life in a store window as part of a demo system or it could have just been held back from sale and never used at all. By definition though, it should have seen a relatively less intense life than a used or refurbished part. In the box we have a driver CD as well as a booklet for the card. Whether this Aorus CD comes with standard cards anyway I can't confirm and as for the untampered yellow tape sealing the anti-static bag I believe this can be found on both new and used cards. So as much as I'd love to say it's never been taken out of the packaging I don't think that's the case. I bought this RTX card from eBuyer here in the UK with whom I've dealt with many times in the past with a 99% success rate. They have included a 90 day warranty with the card which is longer than you'd likely get from a random auction site seller but obviously less than the guarantee a new card would come with. In terms of the GPU itself this is the Gigabyte WinForce 2X version. It's very plain looking, which if you've been a viewer for a while, you'll know I love, and it's incredibly lightweight. This model has always been the cheapest, or one of the cheapest 2070s on the market, and that is obvious when you handle it, but again, it caters perfectly to my personal taste. More on the specs a little later. So while waiting for this card to arrive, I looked up a couple more reviews, and dwelling on these can be as concerning as googling your ailments. I read a few reports of the Gigabyte model running loudly, getting hot quickly, and some said that the fans would rattle under load. So far, I would actually call this fairly quiet. It's certainly audible, but seems to generate just half the noise of my 5700 XT, and it's certainly far quieter than my PS4 when running Red Dead Redemption 2. Then again, so is wearing a hearing aid to a Metallica concert. So, your used or X-Display graphics card has arrived. What should you do now? Well, to be honest, the first thing I would recommend is actually installing the card in your system and installing the drivers to go along with it. This determines whether or not the card works out of the box as it should. And this should be done, I feel, before changing the thermal paste because... At least if you test it first and you can either confirm it working or not working, you know that you haven't done any damage to the card. For example, if you take it out of the box and you replace the paste straight away, you put it in your system and it doesn't work, you can't be sure whether or not you've broken it by tampering with it or it's already broken. Now, it's probably quite difficult to break a graphics card when replacing the thermal paste these days, but I like to be 100% sure whether I'm responsible for breaking something or not. Now I was glad to see that when I installed the drivers and the screen flickered for a half a second that everything installed correctly and I regained a display. This is always a pretty tense moment when the screen goes black for a little while and then all of a sudden it comes back on and it's set to the default resolution of your monitor. You can breathe a sigh of relief. After that, 
I would then recommend checking the temperatures in MSI Afterburner, for example, the idle temperatures, maybe firing up a game to see where you are in terms of the load temperatures, running a couple of GPU intensive tests um, with specialized programs, and then taking the card out of the system, replacing the paste if the temperatures are getting too high. It might be a good idea to do this anyway with a second hand card. And I'd also check that the fans are spinning too. You can do this just by looking at the card itself. You know, I've had it before where I've purchased a card and I thought this is getting a little bit hot. I replaced the paste and because my card was facing down in the system, very much like the 2070 is today, I didn't notice that only one of the fans was working. With everything working as it should then, it was time to have a bit of fun with this card. So launched in 2018, this 2070 features 8 gigs of GDDR6, comes equipped with 2304 CUDA cores and requires a solo 8 pin connector. It was eventually succeeded by the 2070 Super and challenged by the 5700 and 5700 XT from AMD, both of which seem to have been largely untouched by the current all-round price increases. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the 2070 has certainly been left behind as we make our way through 2020, but it's still worth keeping an eye out for one on the used market if the price is right. To be honest, in the grand scheme of things, I probably paid a little over the odds, but I've wanted to mess around with ray tracing for a while and taking the current market trend into consideration, I don't think I got a bad deal. Let's have some fun. So despite what some of you thought on Instagram, I didn't buy this solely for RTX Minecraft, although I did find it quite funny how 2160p and ray tracing destroyed my frame rate. Interestingly, after enabling DLSS, which renders the game at a lower internal resolution and upscales it to your display, the frame rate increased to around 35 and it still looks just as impressive. I can't believe Minecraft can now be considered a GPU melter. This was also the case in Quake 2. This is a game that will run at 1000 FPS under normal circumstances, 1000 frames per second. Very smooth indeed. Switching on ray tracing though, well say goodbye to 950 of those frames. I'm not just messing about here, I'm conducting some very important research. After all, we need to make sure our X display card works as it should and doesn't overheat or just fail imminently. At this point, I did notice that the fans randomly span up for about half a second when entering Forza Horizon 4's menu. It actually made me jump. They just went whoosh and then defaulted to idle, which was odd, but again, I've read that this is known to happen with this model. Setting a custom fan curve in Afterburner would probably resolve this, but honestly, it's happened twice for a total combined time span of one second, so it doesn't really bother me. I'm just glad to know that this isn't an undocumented problem. When actually playing games though, this doesn't occur as the fan speeds build steadily. And as I mentioned before, they seem a lot quieter to the ear than some reviews led me to believe. So to summarize, when buying an X display card of any kind, what you're essentially getting is a card that may have been in a shop display, but it should have seen less use, as I said before, than one that you can find used. And it still comes with some sort of warranty. When you consider the prices of a new one of these, it equates to about £40 more in the UK. Well, it's important to carefully consider how you wish to proceed. But I hope this gives you some sort of idea of what X Display is all about. And uh, I was certainly relieved to find everything in working order here. You know, sometimes I take these risks so that you don't have to, but hopefully this helps some of you out. So some of you may be wondering whether or not I bought this to replace my 5700 XT after previously saying that I was going to stick with the 5700 XT despite its, albeit now reduced, problems with the drivers. And to be honest, no I didn't. I purchased this RTX simply so that I could make a couple of RTX based videos and because there are some scenarios where the AMD card doesn't work. For example, with slightly older motherboards. Hopefully I'll have better luck with this. But it performs quite closely to the 5700 XT in some titles and a little bit weaker in others. I just felt that if I'm testing an older CPU, something like that, and I don't have much luck with the 5700 XT, I can bring you tests by using the 2072. I just wanted to make sure that I have 
another option available should I need to resort to it. But I have to say that I am really enjoying my time with this GPU. So all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you'd ever opt for a used 2070, what you think of X display cards in general. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.